So in, in, in here we want to determine the magnitude and direction of the couple. <coughs> so if, if I look at the problem, what you have is basically a force here with the magnitude as 260. Then you have <coughs> another force with the magnitude as 260. And <coughs> since they have the same magnitude, and they are in the opposite direction. So that's going to form a couple. So if I need to find the magnitude at the moment of this couple, then we can <coughs> do, I mean one thing I could see that since this is going like this, it's going like this, the direction is going to show up this way. Or if it's going to act on a body, it should, rot it should make a rotation in the counterclockwise direction or its actual sense is going to be positive k. But to find the magnitude, you have an option. You can take the force, then you multiply it by the perpendicular distance between those two. That should give you the magnitude. But something like this is hard to find the perpendicular distance. What you could do is you choose this, or this point and you sum the moments about this point. So if you choose that point, then this force goes right through this. So the actual moment of this force about this point will be zero. The next thing we need is the moment of this force about this point. And you could take components. So instead of finding the moment of this about this, you find the moment of its components by the same point and add it together. That will be the same thing. So <coughs> that's what we're going to do. We're going to sum the moments about point A and that's basically the MC or the actual moment of the couple. So <coughs> You need some angles. So if I take this angle as theta, then this angle would be theta. Your components will be 260 cosine theta for the x component. Then you have 260 sine theta as the y component. And then we need to find the <coughs> theta itself, so your tangent theta will be this height which is 7 minus, one, 7 minus 2, that will be 5, and this length that is 12. So you have a triangle with 5 and 12. The diagonal is going to be 5 is square and 12 is square, this angle being theta. <coughs> That's 25. 144, so 9 and 6, so the square root of 169 should be 13, so that becomes 13. So <coughs> the sine theta will be 5 over 13, cosine theta is going to be 12 over 13. So, <coughs> so I'm Trying to sum the moments about point A, we have 260 cosine theta, which is 12 over 13. So that's what you have as the x component. Then we need the perpendicular distance of this from point A. So all you need to do is extend this, and that's going to be the perpendicular distance. 
So from this figure, that distance will be basically 6 plus 7. So this was the force, that was the perpendicular distance. And you can see why it, it's easier to <coughs> work with components because you don't have to do any extra math for finding the perpendicular distance. The next thing you need is the direction. <coughs> so this force could be moved all the way up to here because force is a sliding vector. But at this point, the tendency for this to go in the counterclockwise direction. So <coughs> I, I'm going to attach a sign to this and we're going to take that as counterclockwise. And I'm also going to take this as positive. Because I told you in the last lecture that a counterclockwise rotation is the same thing as the moment vector being in the z direction. Because <coughs> for this case, x cross y is going to be this, that's your z. So your fingers are always going to go in counterclockwise direction. So that's one part of this. Then you got the y component. 